Welcome back to the channel. In today's review, I'm filming the 2023 Chevrolet Blazer. This is the RS trim. This is a sporty looking Blazer in the Blazer's family. Let's talk about pricing for the Blazer RS. Starting price is at $45,400. This one includes destination. This one stickers for $51,360. If you guys are in the market for a Chevy, be sure to check out your local Chevrolet dealership in order to purchase a Blazer or any, or any other Chevrolet products. With that being said, let's get into the exterior styling for this refresh Blazer. Looking at the exterior styling for the refresh Chevrolet Blazer RS trim here, as you guys can see, the front styling looks even more uh, sporty compared to the previous uh, model year. Me personally, I think Chevrolet did a really good job with refreshing this vehicle. They did ever so slightly here, but it does look really good. We'll talk about the interior as well. They also offer that large display. My model is painted with this two-tone look here, and this paint is called Radiant Red, which is also an option. Me personally speaking, this is the way that I would configure my Blazer, and minus my test model does not have a sunroof, so I was specking that sunroof as well. Looking here, this is the turn signal and daytime running light. If you guys are wondering, the headlights are gonna be right here. They're pretty bright at nighttime, especially in low light conditions. There's the RS badge here, which stands for Rally Sport. Large blacked out grill, the blacked out Chevrolet bow tie with the chrome accent. And sadly, there is no fault lights here on this particular model. I think Chevrolet doesn't offer fault lights. Maybe you guys do, maybe you guys can do at the market if you guys want fault lights. But let me know in the comment section what you guys think about the exterior styling. To me, I think Chevrolet did a really good job with this being a refresh blazer. This vehicle also offers 7.4 inches of ground clearance. This has a 112.7 inch wheelbase with an overall length of 191.9. So it does have some really good proportions in this hot segment here. But looking at these tires and wheels here, these are a 265-45 Continental Cross Contact LX Sport tire. So pretty good tires on the market. I like the nice multi-spoke with the chrome and gloss black finish. There's a Chevrolet bow tie, which is blacked out in the center cap with these gloss black fenders here and rocker panels, which is gloss black as well. There's a blazer name. Me personally, I like the way that this badge is look. It's a little high for my taste, but it, look, it does look really good being black painted. There's this LED sight marker here with a nice two-tone, like I mentioned. And like I mentioned also, sadly, my model is missing that large panoramic sunroof here, which you guys, if you guys want it, you have to spec it in. And there's these nicely integrated roof rails here, but making our way towards the rear of the vehicle, there's also this floating like roof design, but since it's two-tone, the whole vehicle has that floating uh, roof design. There's also this integrated rear spoiler here, which looks really sporty. That's this rear wiper here. That's a Chevrolet bow tie, which is blacked out. That's the RS badge there. Looking at these taillights here, they're a full LED, which is a turn signal, brake light, and reverse light. There's a blazer name, which is blacked out with this all-wheel drive badge. Looking down here, there's rear parking sensors with these dual tip exhausts. And if, once you guys remove this here, this plastic piece, uh, Chevrolet says that you can tow around 4,500 pounds properly equipped. And if you guys are wondering, what is this camera for? This is for the digital rear view camera mirror. I'll show you guys that in the actual inside scene. So that's why there's two camera lens here. One's for the backup camera and one is for the digital rear view camera mirror. Open up the cargo back here. This has a power opening tailgate. Once it opens up, it reveals 30.5 cubic feet of space. So as you guys can see, there's all my crap back here, my camera equipment and so forth. And off to the side, there's these little slots here that you guys can put things in. Like for example, my shoes are there. There's also LED lights back here if you guys are in a non-lit area with these grocery tree hooks back here. And my model is missing the tunnel cover. Pull this lever here that expands the cargo to 64.2 cubic feet of space. And looking underneath here, Chevrolet does give you a temporary spare tire instead of a fix a flat kit. Sitting in the interior of the refresh Chevrolet Blazer, as you guys can see, this is the biggest change in this interior besides that smaller eight inch display from the previous model year. This is a larger display which supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's not their newer Google-based system like in the Silverado and some of the newer uh, products that they're gonna be offering towards the end of this year or early next year. But as you guys can see, this interior is very well laid out. It does have this black interior with a nice uh, piping uh, stitching and red accented trim in, in the actual seats. They're gonna be three level heated and cool seats. Above me, my model is missing that panoramic sunroof, but shutting the door here, as you guys can see, visibility wise, great visibility throughout this vehicle. But to start up the vehicle, you guys know, put your foot on the brake and press the start stop button right here. And you're greeted by the Chevrolet uh, logo right there on the display. And the gauge will do a nice sweep. This screen is customizable here. I can show you guys how to do that very quickly by resting your finger to the left or right here. You can go all the way down. You can change the gauge from a sport uh, gauge to a, um, to a touring gauge. Me personally, I actually like 
the sport gauge over the touring because it just looks too simple for my taste but once again that's just a small nitpick and personally speaking i would just basically just leave it in its actual uh, sport uh, gauge there because it gives you a little bit better more it gives you better information i like that chevy has this digital and analog look for the rpm the coolant temperature and the fuel gauge is there when chevrolet dropped this vehicle off to my house it was saying 517 miles on a full tank of gas mind you guys this vehicle does have 5,000 miles on the odometer let's talk about the materials here on the door panel it's gonna be a nice soft touch material with this gloss black trim here with this aluminum accented trim for the door handle there's your lock control two person memory seats nice padded material here with uh, red stitching there's some red accent throughout this vehicle to break up the sea of black but it is nice that it has black in the red contrast just like the exterior and down here is going to be for the trunk release this does have the Bose audio sound system, which sounds really good. I was just jamming my favorite tunes. And looking at the window controls here, pretty high quality. It is auto up and down for the driver, but down, but auto down for the rest of the windows, but not up. There's your mirror adjustment controls here. The steering wheel here does have this multi-spoke design. That's your forward collision warning button here. Heated steering wheel function. Don't need that today because it's like 90 degrees outside. There's a blacked out Chevrolet bow tie, your voice commands, and you can customize this display here. Very thick rim, nice leather here with the red stitching. There's your automatic high beam switch, turn signal stock. If you guys are wondering where the headlight controls is, it's right here. The dimmer switch and for the electronic parking brake. And this is this also has a power tilt and telescoping wheel. Let's talk about the biggest change here very quick. As you guys can see, I do have the wireless CarPlay connected. It does support, it does support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The very responsive screen here, press this home button here. Now you guys are looking at Chevy's older interface because like I mentioned, they do have the Google base, the, the Google base system. So this is quote unquote their older system, but it's still very modern, very snappy. As you guys can see, really good resolutions here and good graphics. But most people probably won't use the embedded navigation. They're gonna just use the wireless CarPlay or Android Auto. Uh, but going back to the system here, as you guys can see, looking at the Waze map here, which I actually like using Waze a lot and it does take up the entire screen. And the CarPlay starts up very quick. There's a push button start here on the dash. Your auto start stop button is here. The hazard button is there. Like I mentioned, shortcut buttons are home, sync, track, has a volume knob, back button. You guys are wondering what this button does and it opens up the glove compartment, which reveals a ton of storage here. There's your traction control. The materials are gonna be nicely padded, nice stitching. Like I mentioned, red accents throughout this vehicle. And this is how you guys change the temperature to lower and raise it by grabbing this uh, knob here and twisting it to the left or right. There's three level heated seats here. This also has dual climate control and the passenger do the passenger does have three level heated and cool seats. Putting the vehicle into reverse here, it does reveal a top-down 360 view. There's trajectory with distance markers. Chevrolet has one of the best backup cameras in the business, as you guys can see. Really good graphics here. And there's different angles around this vehicle, as you guys can see. There's a side view, so you guys won't curb your tires. It's also a rear view, and this is the front view here. So as you guys can see, I'm kind of close to the curb, but not too close. But it does give you a nice uh, idea where the tire is going to be hitting or where it's not going to be hitting. And it's also a front view camera. As you guys can see the Honda Accord right there. It does show you uh, what's in front of the vehicle as well. That's a wireless phone charging pad here which supports my iPhone 14 Pro Max. Kicking it down here into drive. There's also a low mode here if you guys are going down a steep gradient and you guys can also change your own gears. And this vehicle can tow 4,500 pounds properly equipped. It's going to be nicely padded here. There's no storage here. I'm surprised that Chevy didn't offer storage, a little bit of uh, storage here, but that's a small nitpick for me. There's parking sensors, there's lane keeping assist. The vehicle always defaults to two-wheel drive once you, once, you, once you turn the vehicle on. It also has all-wheel drive. There's a sport mode here. Gives you like a little graphic here. And it says sport mode, that's an off-road mode, and there is a tow haul mode if you guys are looking to tow. Like I mentioned, the vehicle will always default to two-wheel drive or touring mode basically once you start it up and now it's locked because it has all-wheel drive as you guys can see to give you the best traction and so forth but once you guys put it into two-wheel drive it disengages the twin clutch all-wheel drive system from chevrolet that's a little bit of storage here it's going to be nicely padded here with nice stitching open it up it does reveal two usb ports it's also an sd slot reader there a 12 volt in there with good amount of storage and as you guys, as you guys can see here a good storage there looking at the seats very supportive and comfortable like i mentioned three level heated and cool seats and my test model does have this digital review camera mirror. As you guys can see, you guys can leave it like a traditional mirror. If you guys don't like that, you can put it to be digital. I seen a guy digging in his nose yesterday. It was kind of funny because he didn't know that I was looking at him. Oh, up here is going to be for your OnStar. If you guys get into an accident, there's an SOS button. And it's going to be LED lights throughout the cabin. A three-car garage remote. And there's a sunglass holder here. This interior is a little darkened. And I'm sitting in the actual shade here as well. But I wish that my test model did have that large panoramic sunroof. But overall... 
The interior of the Chevy Blazer is very impressive, good materials, good technology, especially with this massive display here, which supports Apple CarPlay in Android Auto. But let's hop into the back seat of the Blazer. Getting into the interior of the Chevrolet Blazer here, open up the rear door. This door opens at a pretty good angle so you guys can access the back seat, especially if you're putting your children back here. Also love the nice two-tone to the actual seats here with the nice red stitching and the nice red inserts here. But let's talk about the materials on the door panel. They're gonna be a pretty decent material with this aluminum accented door handle. That's one level heated seats back here, no cool seats. The switch gear feels really good. Nice padded material here, nice stitching, large storage and cup holder space here in the door pocket. This vehicle does offer 7.4 inches of ground clearance. So pretty good ground clearance in the segment. You guys can also fold down the seats here and recline the seat via this handle here. But getting inside the vehicle, like I mentioned, it does offer good ground clearance. But getting back here, as you guys see, I do have plenty of foot space underneath the driver's seat. Chevrolet says this has 39.6 inches of rear legroom space. There's two mat pockets back here for rear storage. There is rear air vents, which is definitely a plus for me. There's USB charging ports, a household outlet here to keep the kids connected. And the floor back here is surprisingly it is flat with this vehicle having all-wheel drive like i mentioned you can re recline the seats and fold them flat pull this armrest down here it does reveal two cup holders it's going to be nicely padded sadly my model is missing that panoramic sunroof but overall the interior of the chevrolet blazer is really comfortable you can fit your family here and also put their things in the actual cargo area if you guys need more space Let's talk about the powertrain specs here for the Blazer. You guys can go for a turbocharged four-cylinder in the, in the lower trim levels, but if you guys go for a higher trim level, you guys will get the company's 3.6 liter V6, which also has variable valve timing. This powertrain right here makes 308 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque. It is paired with GM's nine-speed automatic transmission. As this vehicle sits here with all-wheel drive, it weighs in at 4,200 pounds, and GM says this vehicle can tow 4,500 pounds with the all-wheel drive system. Keep in mind, all Blazers remain front-wheel drive, but all-wheel drive is available. But let's talk about fuel economy for the Blazer here while walking over to the fuel door. When Chevy dropped this vehicle off to me, it was saying that it will get 517 miles on a full tank of gas. This vehicle has a 21.7 gallon gas tank. This is ready to get 19 in the city and 26 on the highway. So I'm behind the wheel of the 2023 Chevrolet Blazer RS trim here. This interior is very sporty looking. I love the refresh blazer here from the exterior styling the beautiful wheels that chevrolet is equipped this rs uh, model with this massive display here which supports apple carplay and android auto as wireless it feels so good not having a cable that you have to carry around with you and plug it in and so forth i like that the system is wireless but keep in mind this is their older their older interface um because it doesn't run the new google based system like their newer products do like the Silverado and so forth um but the blazer is coming up to be full electric. I'm not sure if Chevy's gonna uh, still sell the combustion engine alongside the EV model, which should be coming out for 2024 or late 2023, like I mentioned. But ride quality wise, ride quality wise, this vehicle does have a very smooth ride quality, even with these big tires and wheels. It doesn't have a harsh ride, very smooth, very compliant. And this has the company's 3.3 liter V6, which makes 308 horsepower and 270 pound feet of torque. It's a good powertrain GM uses this, uses this powertrain in every other product as well, from Cadillac to Buick. So it's a really good powertrain. It's a workhorse, workhorse uh, in their lineup. It's a good silky smooth powertrain. This also has the company's twin clutch all-wheel drive system, which is an option. It does a really good job, but let's come to a stop here and I'm gonna put it into its sport mode here. This is not that you turn to the right here. It's in sport, all-wheel drive. I'm gonna brake boost it. <laughs> this thing will haul butt. It sounds good. That's a strong sounding V6. The nine speed is good out the gate. It knows we're gonna be in the middle of its power band. Very silky smooth powertrain. It's a good powertrain, but it's just lacking the paddles. There's some controls back here to change the radio uh, station and adjust the volume and so forth. But Let's take it out of its all-wheel drive system. The all-wheel drive system is very beautiful. There was no slippage or anything like that. The vehicle will always default to front-wheel drive. Keep that in mind. So if you guys stay in a cold weather state, you guys have to be very mindful to switch this knob here so that you won't get stuck in any um, slushy-like conditions or stuff like that because the system will always default to front-wheel drive once you turn on the vehicle. So we got to keep that in mind. The materials are pretty good materials. There's two-person receipts. So if your spouse uh, likes to adjust their seat in a different way, 
they can always press either one or two or you can have your own presets to the seats great visibility great seats there are three level heated and cool seats i love the technology the powertrain is very good great performance and it has a really good sound and i like that uh but my model is sadly missing that panoramic option which i would definitely spec in because this cabin is a little dark especially uh at nighttime but there is some ambient lighting under the dashboard the footwells around the door handles and so forth but it's not customizable i looked through the infotainment system i didn't see that you can change it to any other color but it's like a um an led script but it is, it's really nice that you can uh see it i'm gonna probably insert a clip so you guys can see how it looks it's pretty uh noticeable in the cabin uh road noise i don't hear any tire noise uh, also but we're gonna hop on the, the expressway and see how this vehicle performs when it's going at a higher speed before getting on the expressway this does have a digital review camera mirror i'm gonna show you guys what i mean so right now you guys can see this kia i think that's a seltos i'm not mistaken not a seltos that's a what is that i don't even know what that is uh sorrento that's what it's called a Sor no not sorrento Sedona. I'm so sorry. I don't remember my cars like that. Uh, that's the Sedona behind me, but now I can leave it like a traditional mirror. But me personally speaking, I love the digital review camera mirror because it just shows so much clearer and so much better. Um, but we're going to get into the expressway here. And, and this is like a little curve, so we're going to test out the handling here. It handles good. It does have that SUV-like feel, so keep in mind, guys, you don't want to go too fast and topple over, but it handles, it keeps this, this vehicle weighs 4,200 pounds, but it doesn't feel like I'm chugging around a, a heavy vehicle here. Um, but getting on the expressway, I just like that V6. It has a nice grunt from it. Like once again, the power tr uh, transmission is very uh, silky smooth. It's not, it's not hunting for gears. But I, I like the Blazer. Spending a couple of days with this vehicle, and like I mentioned, this vehicle was saying it will get over 517 miles on a full tank of gas. So you guys can, you know, travel a long distance in the Blazer. So the V6 is the way to go. I mean, I haven't driven the Turbo 4, but me personally, I would just skip that powertrain entirely and just go for the this powertrain here. I'm gonna set the cruise control to 78 miles an hour. The speed limit is 65. I'm gonna go just. Uh, two or three miles over the speed limit just a little bit um just so i can hear the wind noise so far i don't hear any wind noise this this is an suv it has around 7.4 inches of ground clearance but i don't hear any wind noise coming inside the cabin it doesn't have super cruise guys keep in mind gm makes one of the best hands-free driving technology in the business i tested out the super cruise and the ct6 before they before they got discontinued back in 2019 um and that system was fantastic i was scared this is that was my first time ever having a car drive me like self-driving but right now the vehicle is doing a good job of keeping me in the lanes there is this little indicator that just popped up but now it's back active um now it's telling me to take control of the steering wheel so keep in mind this system is good you know if you guys are looking to grab something real quick and put your hand back on the steering wheel but general gm has the super cruise but it's not available on the blazer as of yet i'm not sure they're gonna offer in the electric blazer let me know in the comment section if you guys know if they're gonna uh, offer it in the in the ev version of the blazer but as of right now i can tell you guys from my experience the super cruise is the best hands-free driving in the business so bravo 2 chevrolet and i think it has over 400,000 miles of map highways uh, that chevy says on their website so that's just fantastic of coverage and data collecting that they've done over the years with their super cruise so in that system you can be hands-free um as long as the uh, highway is mapped and the indicator shows green on the status bar and also in the cluster and with the super cruise it will watch your face but this particular model that i'm showing you guys does not have it but the adaptive cruise control does a really good job of keeping you in the lanes but you but you do have to keep your hands on the wheel at all times after spending time with the 2023 Chevrolet Blazer RS trim here, this vehicle looks very sporty. It handles very well. It also has a spacious interior, tons of cargo space. My family and my friends that I showed this vehicle to, they love this vehicle, especially with the nice two-tone paint here. It looks really good. I love everything about the Blazer. This is the way that I would configure my Blazer to be, but this one is sadly missing the panoramic sunroof, so I would personally spec that in to let light and air into that darkened cabin. But the seats look very well with that two-tone look. And if you guys are looking for a full electric vehicle, Chevrolet will be offering a full electric Blazer at the beginning of 2024 or later this year in 2023. But this vehicle actually gets better fuel economy than what it says on the actual paper. I got a little bit 
over than what the EPA suggests. I got around like one to three MPG better uh, with the fuel economy. And when Chevrolet dropped this vehicle off to my house, this vehicle was saying 517 miles on a full tank of gas. Keep in mind, this vehicle has over 5,000 miles on the odometer, so that could play a part and with this vehicle having that amount of uh, range on a full tank of gas. With that being said, I'd like to give a special thanks to everyone at General Motors, everyone that plays a part in me getting this uh, press vehicle for a couple of days to test. Once again, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And special thanks to you guys for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this Blazer RS.